ever found yourself transported to the 1970s, curled up on the couch, watching the small screen? Well, if you haven't met Rhoda yet, you're in for a treat. This classic TV series, born in 1974, quickly became a household favorite. The first time you tuned in, did you anticipate a journey filled with laughter, surprise, and a touch of sadness? Rhoda, a spin-off from the Mary Tyler Moore Show, introduces us to the life of a lovable character navigating relationships and career in the city. Now, here's the hook. Brace yourself for a roller coaster of funny, shocking, and even heart-wrenching facts about this gem. So, keep your eyes glued to the screen. There's more to discover. Have you stumbled upon any lesser-known facts or anecdotes about the show that left you fascinated? Feel free to share. We're all ears for those hidden gems that make it even more intriguing. Now, rewind a bit in your own memory lane. What's your most cherished moment or personal experience with Rhoda? We'd love to hear your stories and memories. Drop them in the comments below. Let's reminisce together. Get ready for a blast from the past filled with nostalgia, humor, and a touch of reality. The show awaits to be rediscovered, and we're eager to hear your take on this timeless TV series. So, spill the beans in the comments your fellow fans are waiting. Rhoda, the 1974 TV series, beautifully portrays a woman's life in busy Manhattan. The opening credits vividly capture her daily routines, offering glimpses of experiences across various city landmarks. From having photos taken in front of Central Park's Alice in Wonderland statue to navigating a mishap at the subway turnstile, the show paints a vivid picture of urban existence. The narrative unfolds as she goes about daily tasks, such as lunching with her sister, Julie Kavner, at an outdoor cafe, shopping for produce on the Lower East Side, and even engaging in an imaginary conversation with a mannequin in a shop window. The scenes seamlessly weave together, providing a glimpse into the character's life, struggles, and relationships. The series also captures the essence of her professional life, showcasing her fetching coffee and pastries as part of her job and pushing a garment cart with determination. The apartment at 332 E84th Street, a co-op allowing rentals, serves as the backdrop for interactions with her sister and her return home. Despite the show's charm and relatability, it's regrettable that she is no longer with us. As of the present, Julie Kavner remains a part of the world of entertainment. In summary, it's a nostalgic journey through the everyday experiences of a woman in the city, skillfully portrayed through the lens of the 1974 TV series. Rhoda, born in 1974, etches an authentic portrayal of a woman's life in bustling Manhattan. The series introduces Valerie Harper, who, interestingly, is not of Jewish descent. The cast includes Nancy Walker, who, like Harper, is not Jewish. However, adding a unique layer to the mix, Julie Kavner and Harold Good bring their Jewish heritage to the screen. In the realm of television history, Valerie Harper stands as the sole woman to clinch the Comedy Emmy Award for a supporting role in the original show and later secure the lead role in the spin-off. This remarkable achievement marks a milestone, mirrored by Robert Guillaume as the only man to accomplish a similar feat. One pivotal episode, Rhoda's Wedding, catapulted the series into record-breaking territory. This crossover episode with the Mary Tyler Moore Show became a rating sensation, cementing its place in television history. The show's prowess in seamlessly blending narratives between two series resulted in an unforgettable television event. Rhoda, navigating the complexities of relationships and career in the city, unfolds against the backdrop of iconic Manhattan landmarks. The vivid portrayal of daily routines, from subway mishaps to outdoor cafe lunches, creates a relatable tapestry of urban existence. The series, anchored by Harper's character, captures the essence of both personal and professional life, showcasing the determination in her job and the interactions in her apartment at 332 E84th Street. Notably, the loss of the character is felt, but Julie Kavner remains a presence in the entertainment world. In summary, Rhoda, with its humor and authenticity, offers a nostalgic journey through the everyday experiences of a woman in the city, skillfully presented through the lens of the 1974 TV series. Before gaining fame as Rhoda Morgenstern, the actress had a successful career in the 1960s, performing in Broadway musicals alongside well-known figures like Jackie Gleason, Robert Morse, Walter Pigeon, Phyllis Newman, Sidney Chaplin, Orson Bean, and Lucille Ball. In the 1976-1977 season, Nancy Walker starred in her own Norman Lear sitcom, The Nancy Walker Show. She took a break from Rhoda as her character embarked on a road trip across the United States with her husband. 
Despite the cancellation of the Nancy Walker show after one season, Walker smoothly returned to her role in Rhoda. Harold Good, who originated the role of Martin Morganstern on The Mary Tyler Moore Show, almost missed reprising his character because of an offer to play Howard Cunningham on Happy Days. Tom Bosley eventually took the role, making Good available for Rhoda the following year. These behind-the-scenes glimpses add layers to the web of casting decisions and scheduling challenges, giving insight into the dynamic nature of the television industry during that era. In the world of television, casting decisions can significantly shape a show's direction and audience reception. This was certainly the case with the series when Joe Bologna was approached for the role of Joe Girard. Unfortunately, negotiations fell through because producers declined to cast his wife, Renee Taylor, in the role of the protagonist boss. This decision not only altered the casting trajectory, but also underscored the complexities behind the scenes. Adding to the familial theme, the show creators decided to give both the protagonist and her sister Brenda the middle name Faye. Their mother's fondness for the name, albeit not enough to use it as a first name, provided a quirky and memorable detail about the family's dynamics, reflecting the show's attention to the nuances of character backgrounds. William Devane, another well-regarded actor, also turned down the opportunity to play Joe Girard. His decision, much like Bologna's, highlights the intricate process of matching actors with roles that best suit their talents and the show's needs. These casting anecdotes reveal the careful consideration that went into building the world around her, highlighting the importance of chemistry and fit over star power alone. Each decision, whether it revolved around casting or character development, contributed to the authenticity and relatability that fans appreciated. This approach helped establish the series as a beloved fixture in television history, remembered for its heartfelt storytelling and well-crafted characters. CBS programming head Fred Silverman played a pivotal role in shaping the Rhoda series. Despite the famous Rhoda getting married episode being a short-term success, he later admitted that it was a mistake for the show. He believed that the marriage eroded her underdog image, a quality that had made her a memorable character. The publicity boost from the wedding episode may have spiked ratings, but in the long run, it led to a lack of focus, a sentiment shared by the series' writers. Silverman also felt that David Groh, cast as Rhoda's husband Joe, was not the comedic powerhouse needed for the role. Interestingly, there was another Morgenstern sister named Debbie who appeared on the Mary Tyler Moore show but did not transition to Rhoda. On a different note, attempts to spin off Carlton, a character from Rhoda, into an animated show named Carlton, Your Dorman proved unsuccessful, despite winning a 1980 Emmy for Best Animated Program. In casting decisions, negotiations with Joe Bologna for the role of Joe Girard fell through due to the producer's refusal to cast his wife, Renee Taylor, in another role. This decision underscored the behind-the-scenes complexities in shaping the series. Furthermore, William Devane declined the opportunity to play Joe Girard, highlighting the challenges of matching actors with roles that suit both their talents and the show's needs. These insights into the show's development shed light on the challenges and choices that influenced its dynamics, providing a deeper understanding of the decisions made behind the scenes. The nuanced approach to casting and storyline development contributed to the authenticity and relatability that defined Rhoda.